second day into our annual roundup. So we try to gather the bison once a year, typically this time of year, late October, early November, and uh, run them through, gather them out of their 24,000 acre pasture, and then run them through our corral system up here. For really two purposes, one is to pull off surplus animals. We have to keep a, a desired stocking rate out there. We don't want to over, you know, overgraze the prairie. And the other big reason we work the animals is to maintain the health of the herd. So depending on what our local vet, veterinarian suggests, we vaccinate for different bovine type diseases. Uh, kind of an annual health checkup is how I think of it. 23. The bison herd is doing real well. Uh, we've had a number of good growing seasons, haven't had any bad droughts for a while, uh, and the bison are doing great. So I think the preserve is on very strong footing right now. I think this has become an integral part of, of this part of the state. Uh, if you're in Pasca driving up here, you go under a giant arch that says Pahuska, gateway to the tall grass prairie. And so I, I think they've really embraced our work here and, and they recognize that what we're trying to do is, is very collaborative. You know, we're not here to uh, make ranching go away. We're here to work with ranching to get more conservation done. The public interest continues to grow. It's amazing the number of people that haven't heard of the Tallgrass Prairie Preserve in Oklahoma City or Tulsa, some of the larger areas. But the, the visitation has certainly grown a lot. Um, it, it just takes time for people to become familiar with something like this. A lot of people have heard about it but haven't been, but we're seeing a lot of people show up now. We brought bison back um, some time ago because we want to have a fully functioning Tallgrass Prairie here. We also want to be a good neighbor, and a part of the roundup is making sure that the bison have their vaccination. We want to help the herd for our neighbors. We, we don't want to cause a problem for our cattle ranching neighbors, and so this is really important for uh, that perspective. I, being neighborly, come over and help. They help us in the springtime and summer a little bit, so just come and try to help out a little bit. The bison are pretty self-supportive. We, we try to manage them for their wildness. Uh, kind of respect the, still the inherent wildness of the species. So we don't supplement them at all. Uh, they just have the grass that grows and the, the water that flows out there. And, uh, and they do pretty well with that kind of program. So they don't really appreciate us touching them anyway. So uh, the Roundup, I think they, you know, they have some anxiety about the Roundup, of course, uh, getting pushed around a little bit, but we try to minimize that. So just one week out of the year, we, uh, we fuss with them a little bit. Otherwise, they're just kind of out there doing their thing. We've got 40,000 acres here. Uh, that's 66, 65 square miles. That's, that's really big. But in the whole grand scheme of things, there used to be something like 50 or 60 million acres of tall grass prairie. There's less than 5% of that left. So what we have here is important, but it's a small piece of the puzzle. We have to work with our ranching neighbors uh, to get conservation done. It has to be done collaboratively. And it has to be done in a sustainable way, a way that works for conservation, but also a way that works uh, economically for the ranches around us. Otherwise, we're not coming up with solutions. Uh, we have to have solutions that are going to be around for a long time. And the reality is the reason we have all this amazing tall grass prairie here still is because of how the ranchers have treated it over the years. So there's, there's already a history of uh, sustainability with ranchers. Uh, we just want to work with them, put our heads together to figure out even better ways to do things.